USF area. Uh, we uh, basically are, are tasked with the force of anything that handles uh, or involves neglect or cruelty that would deal with uh, livestock, and that being hooked livestock. Uh, we, we don't deal with cats and dogs or chickens or peacocks or anything along those lines. Uh, Hillsborough County Animal Services deals with those. Um, <clears throat> uh, the other thing we deal with is uh, loose livestock at night or during the day. Uh, a lot of times we'll come and to a call at somebody's house where there'd be absolutely nothing wrong. We're going to ask you for your name and your phone number. Uh, in case somebody does run through the, your fence in the middle of the night or during the middle of the day or your horse gets out or something, uh, we will call you and try to make every attempt at getting uh, your animal back to you uh, rather than us impounding it. Because if we impound it, there's going to be a fee on it. And, uh, I mean, money's tight for a lot of people right now. Um, basically, uh, like I said, I, I have a stack of cards I'm going to leave over here on the table for y'all, too. It's a business card that has my name and number on it. Uh, that being said, there's only, like I said, there's four of us. And out of the four of us, there's only three of us actually assigned there right now. One person is out on another uh, assignment. When we go around to a lot of these places, a lot of these uh, calls that we get come from, from people uh, that's going to call into our office or they ride by and they, they see a skinny horse or a skinny cow or something along those lines. Uh, we rely heavily on that uh, because we cannot be everywhere at the same time. Um, people, the general public, you're going to see stuff in people's backyards that we don't have access to. So by calling us, um, we will try to get out there as quickly as we can to take a look at it and, and go from there. Uh, a lot of the stuff that we go to, uh, I don't per se, and this is a personal belief of mine, is, is not neglect uh, on people's part as far as being intentional neglect. I think a lot of people uh, move to a place that they can have a horse or, or cattle and they've always wanted to live in the country and, and they get into it. Well, it is, most of y'all know uh, being a horse owner is an expensive feat. Uh, this place here without your donations and, and uh, your volunteer work here, would uh, I, I don't think you do it. Uh, it's, the cost is enormous on this and we've seen a lot of horse rescue groups that start up with good intentions and end up somewhere bad and they can't take care of these animals. Um, but we, we do rely on uh, people calling us, uh, having us come check on different things. Uh, we get a lot of calls from, from the rescue here, us in turn have rescued horses and, and the horses that we need we needed to have a home so we called RVR and they, they without a doubt taken uh, every horse that we've called them on so um, the other option that you have on those you really don't have an option right now if you don't have a rescue group that's going to come out and take these things uh, they, they used to be the slaughterhouses that were open the, those you know uh, are long gone and it's not going to be there so these horses have to be cared for as far as the sheriff's office, where we differentiate between uh, dogs and cats and, and their uh, animal services has a right to come to your house and based on county ordinances and state laws, <clears throat> they can or cannot take your whore or take your cat and dog right there at that present time. Uh, with us, it's a lot different. Um, just because you see a skinny horse in a backyard somewhere doesn't mean that horse is being neglected. Um, th there's a hundred different reasons why that horse is skinny. Uh, a lot of times we'll get there, and when, when we do get there, we talk to the owners. Uh, we let them give us a, a plausible excuse why the animal is uh, in, in the condition that it is in. Um, that being said, a lot of people tend to think that they're smarter than we are. Uh, they will give us nine, 19 different reasons why that horse is in the shape that it's in. Um, I've been to a ton of schools. Uh, I have a, a huge knowledge of, of livestock. Um, I'm 50 some years old now, and I've been raised around livestock most of my life. Uh, I think that was one of the conditions that, that I was put over here in this unit as. Um, the main reason when we get to a place, if, if the horse is looking bad, most owners that see it every day really sometimes don't really, really see the, the, the 
decline in an animal that we will when we first show up. If we don't see an animal, we see an animal in a month and we come back in a month, we see it again, we've taken pictures and we can see a noticeable decline in that animal. Uh, if it's there in your backyard every day and, and you really don't see it or you tend to overlook it or you think that it's going to get better next week because there's going to be a, a, a different reason for it. Um, we recommend to everybody, I, I mean, I could probably tell you how to fix that animal, but for some reason it has some type of medical condition that I do not know about because I'm not a veterinarian. Our, our first recommendation is to call a veterinarian. It, it's going to cost you a little bit of money, but that vet can tell you from day one how to fix that animal and, and how to get it back to where it's at. Uh, if you cannot fix it or you don't have the money to fix it, If you don't have the money to fix it, we, we try to recommend you know the people to, to find a home for it. Uh, we, we recommend different rescues uh, to it to call them. Um, I know Sean here uh, with RVR and the other people that are here, they're more willing to help you, they're more willing to tell you how to fix that animal. Uh, if they can help you out as far as feed or financially, I think they, they will and have. Um, our main purpose of coming to a house is not to arrest you, it's not to take your animal. Um, it, it's my, and once again, it's solely my opinion, uh, it, it does no good. Uh, by arresting you, it's going to tie up the court system. Uh, I don't think the courts way up, higher up, really give a whole lot of credence to it in, in the level of importance. When, when they're looking at the way crime is today and they're looking you know, at a lot of these people that uh, you know, are, are been arrested on a lot greater charges, and, and you put that in the same scheme as, as you know somebody that hasn't fed their horse. I don't think they play as much importance on it. We we are seeing these laws changing right now. Uh, the people that we have arrested for neglect here lately uh, are beginning to get stiffer sentences. Um, I, I think the judges and in, in their perception. Uh, what's going on with this stuff is really starting to catch your eye and, and they are taking a greater stance on it which is, is good for us and, and for everybody um, but like I said it, it's not to take your animal because a lot of times we, we will take your animal and then once we have that animal at our facility we feed it we have vets come out and check it the, the cost on that, that, that that we see on just one horse is enormous and now you take like our yard, it's got 30 or 40 horses out here and you multiply what we spend on just one horse by 30 or 40 horses, it's just, it's astronomical what they're spending out here. So if y'all can help them, I would greatly uh, advise y'all or, or ask you to help these people. They're doing a good thing. Um, once we take these animals, we, we get them back to a certain uh, area or a certain condition where the, the vet actually says that yes, they can uh, you know, be either placed or sold. Uh, a lot of times, because of the way the state law is, we have to sell these horses at public auction. Once they're sold at public auction, we may have $10,000 in a horse on feed and, and man hours and, and everything else we have on that. And we'll take it to a public auction and that same horse be sold for $25. Uh, and it's kind of a process because the person that's at a horse auction looking for a $25 horse probably doesn't have a whole lot of money to start with. They buy this horse because it's, it's a good deal. They get it and the whole circle starts again. They get it home, they find out how much it costs for, for vet care and feed and, and everything they got to do with it. And they, uh, it, it just kind of goes by the wayside again and in six months we're called back out on the same horse. Um, like I said, a lot of, a lot of the conditions that we go out on, uh, our skinny horses is the main complaint that we get and once we get out there, a lot of it has to do with uh, feeding, a lot of it has to do with educating the actual horse owners. Um, we can tell you basically what to feed and how to feed it and it may get back. But, and like I said, in the outside, it has some type of medical condition, a pre-existing condition that we do not know of. You can feed it everything in the world, and it's not going to come back. It may be something as simple as floating the horse's teeth, and people just overlook it. And uh, just from flo floating a horse's teeth, filing it down, um, 
just that simple fact will, will, will get them back. But we, uh, like I said, we, we welcome your phone calls. Uh, if there's any questions, I can answer them here. Uh, I'm gonna, like I said, I'm gonna leave some business cards here with with uh, Kelly or Sean and stuff. Uh, please, by all means, if y'all are here and you, you, you do want my phone number, it's on there. It's a cell phone number. Uh, if I don't answer it, uh, leave a, a message on there. I will get to it. If you leave me you know, your name and number, or just if you even want to do that, just leave me a location where you think there's a horse that needs to be looked at. 99% um, of our calls that come in comes in from the public. We just, because being three of us for the entire county, we just don't have the time to ride around.